All right. Thanks so much, Devani. I assume you can hear me. Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. I don't know what happened. We were doing our little quick trial run, but audio and sharing, I had to kind of just restart and get back in. So appreciate anyone who jumped on and saw that. Um, so thanks. Uh, my name is Katie Globig, like Devani said. Um, I am the product owner for GSA NRF, which I'm going to demo and show you today. Um, so what does product owner really mean? Kind of like to go over that first for those that maybe haven't heard that term. Um, I work with our development team, just day-to-day -day operations, um, ensuring that defects get fixed. Um, if we have new features requested from users, that that um, is, is communicated properly to a development team. Um, and I also assist our community and content managers um, from a technical standpoint to make sure that they can get their content posted up there. So I'm going to give you kind of a, a big overview of what Interact does, um, and I'll show you some different points of context. If there's maybe a group or two that stands out to you, um, I'll encourage you to join it, but you'll also see there's some people that you can reach out to if you have specific questions about those groups. Um, I did want to call out St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow, so wear my green. I hope that you remember to throw it on tomorrow so nobody pinches you. Um, and it's nice that it's on a Friday. So excited for that. All right, so I believe Devani was gonna launch a poll. I was curious to see um, how many people have actually used Interact, um, you know, yeah. prior to today. Um, you know, if you have used it, kind of think to yourself, um, you know, what, um, what did you use it for? And have you used it in the past, let's say, if you're in the yes or the maybe kind of category, um, have you used it recently? Because what you might see today might look a little bit different. Um, Katie, I apologize for the poll that's giving me an, another question here. No problem, no problem. Yeah. Um, we, you know, just curious, I see somebody said, no, they haven't used it. Um, if we could get the poll up there at some point, I would like to get an understanding of how many people here have or haven't, but no, not a problem if it's not working. I, I totally understand. Um, but for those, you know, you're welcome to, to keep answering um, or just sort of thinking to yourself um, about your historical use of GSA Interact. So what I want this group to think of um, when they think of Interact is a procurement network um, with the GSA acquisition community and customer agencies. So if you're here today, uh, most likely Interact is going to be a valuable tool for you. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna go over um, GSA Interact. So one second while I get that going. And do you see my screen? I want to kind of minimize that, okay. I'm going to assume you're seeing uh, GSA Interact. Um, if not, somebody just go ahead and let me know. All right, so this is the homepage for Interact. Gives you just a brief description of what Interact is. Um, I do want to actually just take a step back. So when you're looking at this, it might look a little different for those that have maybe historically used GSA Interact in the past. Um, we did launch GSA Interact in a new design, I believe it was last June. So we're kind of coming up on a year now of this new design. So if it looks different to you, that's probably why. But one of the great things about what we did is that it's now connected to our larger buy.gsa.gov platform. So you no longer have to remember a bunch of different URLs for different resources and applications across GSA. You can just remember the buy.gsa.gov and you can come to this landing page and you know, feel free to come here um, you know, after this call and take a look around and see if maybe there's other resources here that would benefit you. Um, we have a document library I know is really popular and Pricing Central I do wanna call out too is one of our other popular areas that we find many people um, get some great information from. This little nine dot menu here this is going to show you a bunch of different sites that are linked from here. Some are built in to this platform. Um, some are still standalone links, but they're all accessible from this page. And GSA Interact is one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and click on GSA Interact from there. And it's going to bring me back to this homepage that I was showing you before. So if you don't want to remember the, the new URL because it is different than what it was before, this is one way that you can get there. I'm gonna go through Interact as um, a signed out user first, just to show you how powerful it is. 
um, without even having to create an account. But I will highly encourage if you're here today and you don't have an account, it's probably worth the five minutes it would take to set one up. So the first thing you're going to notice is that um, after reading the description, we go right into all of the different communities available to you on GSA Interact. So the content on here is all organized within different communities. And they're initially listed here alphabetical. So if you wanted to scroll through them all and read the title and the description, you're welcome to do that. Um, each of these communities has an image associated with them just to help you kind of quickly identify it, the name of the community, and then the uh, description of it. Some communities are private, in which case they're gonna have the request to join. Before you request to join any of those communities, just make sure you read the description really close to ensure that you do um, meet their criteria of what they're looking for. Oftentimes it, you need to be a contract holder of a specific contract, um, in which case your an email address should already kind of be accounted for behind the scenes. So make sure you're signing up with an email you know, that you're using to do business and which case they'll be able to identify that you should be a part of that community. If it's a public community, um, the join button is there. You are able to automatically join any of the public communities. You would obviously just have to be signed in. Um, when I click on that join button, it's just gonna tell me that I need to sign in before I can do that. Um, but I did wanna call out that public communities, anybody is able to join um, and just the private ones, they do vet your access. And again, just pay attention to those descriptions so that you ensure that you are um, meeting the criteria that that community is looking for. So like I was mentioning, you can scroll through here. You can take a look at all the different communities that are available. Or if you have a specific category maybe that you work in, um, you can go ahead and click on this drop down menu here and you can refine the communities based on a specific filter here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the uh, professional services, and you'll see all the different communities that are associated with professional services. So we have just quite a few here, HCADS, um, our multiple award schedule, OASIS. So a couple of different great options there. So just a way that you can sort of take a look at what's available to you. Um, if you kind of just didn't want to scroll through every single community, we have officially 41 different communities um, as of last week, which is really exciting. Okay, <laughs> looks like we had our recording stop and go. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the, let's see, I'm gonna jump into the multiple word schedule community. This is the most likely community that everyone here should join. Um, so I'm gonna kind of throw that out there quite a few times, but pretty easy, you can also join it from uh, the detailed page. So all I did was click on that tile that was there and this is the page that's gonna open up. So just a reminder, I'm still signed out. You can see a lot of great information without having to create an account. You'll be able to see the full description here. Again, the option to join, the number of members. Um, again, a reminder that it is a public community. And as you scroll down, the first tab that's going to be open is the activity feed. And this is going to show you all of the different posts in this community, um, Organized by date is the default, and the most recent is going to be at the top. So we actually just had a post in here uh, earlier today, which is great. So again, these posts have a title, who created it, the timestamp, and then the content itself. And there's kind of a larger amount of content just to read more. And um, that's about it as far as what you can do as a signed out user. Um, this three dot menu here is gonna have a couple more options for you. You can copy the link, you can share it out to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, and if I click on this like button, it's going to encourage me to sign in because I can't like something unless they know who's liking it. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and scroll through here and see a bunch of different content that is available to you. Again, all signed out. Um, sometimes we have attachments that are in here with the blog post. I'm just scroll through one more so you can see what it looks like. All right, so scrolling back up, I'm gonna show you a couple other things. If you wanted to sort the content within the communities, you have a couple of different ways you can do it. You can sort by the number of comments and the number of likes. And then there's also keyword search over here. So 
Um, you can type in anything you want. This is only going to do a keyword search within the community that you are in. So if you know this multiple word schedule community is of interest to you and you heard they posted something, or if you're looking for specific type of content inside that community, just go ahead and start typing. And as you type a, a phrase, I put Maz, um, 143 out of 157 posts reference Maz in one way or another. I'm going to start typing the title of this other one, take it advantage. Oops, my keyboard is and two posts have the phrase take advantage in it. So um, if you were just looking for something specific, it's a super quick way to refine that content. Additionally, if some content managers, when they create content, opt into marking something as a training and event, um, you can also search by training and events. There's a couple things here that have been uh, designated a training or event. So if you know that there's something coming up and you wanted to find that information, it's another way to do that filter. Same thing with videos or attachments. Okay, I'm going to go over and show you a couple of the other tabs here. And the next one is community information. So this is all the different people that are behind the scenes managing this community. Uh, Steve being one of them, we just heard from earlier, and um, just identifies their different roles that they have and their email address. So if you are interested in specific content, um, being created, or if you have an idea for content and you don't want to post it yourself, um, or if you're looking for more content to be added of a specific topic, you are more than welcome to email these community and content managers with your ideas. Um, these spaces, if, if it applies to you, is, is meant for you, um, is completely open to having you provide that feedback on what you're looking for there. And then the settings over here just goes into a little bit more description on what the public setting means. And this group has chosen to disable posting and what that means. Disable posting by members, um, our content managers are always able to post. And the last tab here is the member info, just a little quick snapshot of all the different members in the group, the name and the date they've joined. And if they've updated their profile picture, it would be there. All right, I'm going to pause for a second and I am going to sign in now because I want to show you a few differences. Um, once you're signed in, and you've created an account. Um, there's a little bit more that you can do. Katie, the uh, poll is working now. OK, great. Um, so everyone go ahead and answer the poll and I'd love to see those results. OK, so have you used USA Interact before today? I definitely have. I'm going to answer yes. I don't know if I can't actually answer yes. Um, host and panelists can't vote. Okay. Um, if I X out of this, it's not going to ruin the pool. I hope I've never used a pool as a, I'm just going to minimize it. I'm too afraid to, to screw something up there. All right. So I am signed in. You know I'm signed in because it says, welcome, Catherine. Um, again, once you create an account, uh, the, the signing in process is fairly simple. As you saw, it only took me like less than a minute to get in. All right, so the biggest difference once you are signed in is that at the very top of the screen here, the communities that you're a member of are going to be listed there at the top. And you're also gonna know you're a member of that community because there's gonna be an icon here with a check mark next to it. And if you hover over it, it's gonna say you are a member of this community. Nothing else really looks too different about the tile. Um, other than it's going to say leave community instead of join community if you're already a member. Let me just scroll down so you can kind of see what that looks like. And then and I'm a member of a whole bunch of communities just for kind of demo purposes. Um, most people probably are a member of kind of one to, to maybe six-ish is going to be my guess, uh, different communities. And then here's the same thing with the drop down if you wanted to, to search for different communities. Let me go back into the multiple award schedule uh, community and just show you the difference of um, what it looks like when you're signed in. So it may not look like too much at first. You're still going to have this landing page. I feel like this number already increased from the last time I was there. I don't know, maybe I'm making that up, but kudos to whoever is joining behind the scenes because I do feel like that number looks different. Um, so when you're signed in, you're going to see a couple different things. I have an elevated role. 
So I have the ability to create new content in this community. Um, like we saw earlier, this setting is post disabled. So the only people that see this create post button here would be myself and other content managers. But if this was a community where members were able to submit content for moderation, you would see this create new post modal and you could click on it. Um, the two only two required pieces of information to submit content on Interact is a title and a body. And then anyone who doesn't have that elevated role, it will get sent to a content manager for moderation. And if they approve, it will then get posted on Interact with your name next to it. I highly encourage um, creating content in communities that, that want you to, that enable posting. Um, there's no harm if, if it's not a piece of content that that content manager feels needs to be in their community. They just simply deny it. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, but I know a lot are really looking for new content to get created. So don't be shy about it if you think there's something um, the, the, the community would benefit from, whether that's a question or you know of an upcoming training. Um, those are all valid things that you can create a post for. There's a couple of different things you can add into a post. You're able to add attachments. Um, these are some elevated settings that the content manager will have. We can have a little you know, sneak peek behind the curtains here. Uh, this is what uh, they would use to set the post to filter as a training and event, as a video. And then they have the ability if they want to send a notification to members, I'm going to come back to that, um, or if they want to turn off comments. Uh, so I believe Maz does allow comments on their groups, will, on their posts, we'll double look at that. Um, but yeah, you can, as a content manager, have full flexibility over how they want to create content. I'm going to stop there. Some of these other settings down here aren't quite as exciting as just posting into more than one community that you may manage. Um, and I just see all the communities as the admin of the site, but a little sneak peek there of, of what creating content is like as um, a content manager. And then again, I see the manage here as an elevated role. Um, if you were a member, it would have that leave button or it would say join if you weren't quite a member yet. Um, Let's see what else is going on. Uh, Active and archive, also an elevated thing, but kind of a fun behind the scenes. Um, if they decide to archive something, it's no longer available to be seen by just a general member, but the content managers are able to remove posts that they no longer feel are um, containing you know, current information. Um, this way things aren't kind of sitting there and getting outdated over the years. Um, it keeps content fresh for our end users such as yourself. All right, so now you can see there's just a little bit more going on here. So I'm able to, if I wanted to add a comment here, um, your comments as members are also moderated. So they'll be posted um, after a content manager approves them. But again, don't let that stop you from posting anything. Just think of that as almost more like an open opportunity to, to provide comments because they're going to make sure that, you know, what you're posting is, is correct to be posted in the group itself. Um, so I don't know, I feel like the barriers to, to posting or commenting um, should be less scary. You don't, you know, I, we talked to quite a few people who, you know, I don't want to post anything. I don't, I don't have anything important to say, but then when you ask them questions or you say, what would you like to know about this? They, they kind of have the same thing everybody else is curious about, or they have some nugget of knowledge that would be really helpful. So um, I just highly encourage if you think at all about posting anything, just do it. Um, you know, they're going to moderate it and um, it could be really, really helpful information for, for those that are, are coming here and, and taking a look. So I will highly encourage posting comments. Um, liking, like I said before, now I can actually like something because I'm signed in. And then I want to go to this three dot menu here. You're going to see a lot of things here. Um, again, as an admin, I have a couple more uh, access things that are elevated, such as editing, but uh, sharing is something that you can now do once you're signed in um, or bookmarking. Um, and then again, that archive and delete is only available to elevated roles. But again, some kind of like sneak peeks behind the curtains. I think it's kind of fun to see some of those things that you don't always get to know about. But we are really trying to ensure that the content on here is valid and is current um, so that you, you know, have access to the best content available to you. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll through here and just look at it, a couple of different posts again. 
So same thing, the ability to add a comment. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that. Um, so all you would have to do is just start typing and then you would hit enter. And I'm not gonna hit enter because it's gonna post it automatically and we don't need this garbage on there. Um, but if you were to do it, it would just say um, your content or your comment has been submitted to the content manager for review. Um, another kind of fun feature is when you're signed in, um, all the communities that you're a member of are over here on the right hand side, just like a quick bookmark that you're able to access um, and see what's going on and you can quickly click into um, other communities. I'm going to go ahead and click in the professional services category. This is one of our very robust communities. They're very active, um, posting a lot. If you work anywhere near professional services, dip your toe in it in any way, I highly encourage joining this community. Um, they're very thoughtful about their content, um, and it's just a really great one to uh, join. So I, I kind of skimmed over a little bit. Um, you know, I'm signed in and I keep encouraging you to join. So, so what are the benefits of joining a community? One of the biggest benefits, and I was sort of showing it whenever I was demoing the, the create a post modal there, is that when you are a member and new content gets posted, our content managers have the option to send an email notification out to anyone who's a member. So to become a member of a public community, all you have to do is be signed in and then click that join button. And then you're a part of the, that member list. And when new content gets created, if they want to send an email notification, you will receive that email notification. So you only really technically need to come here once and join the communities that are of interest to you. Now, I would suggest coming back and taking a look to see if other communities have been added that might be of value to you too. But it's not something you have to kind of keep going back to and looking at, right? Um, you know, Interact will send you those notifications and you can just sort of see the new content through your inbox. I still encourage coming back and liking, commenting, providing that feedback to our content manager.